This is amazing to have you here. And here we are still standing up with our special guest, Tori Hart. Oh, I'm looking forward to this one. Hello. We got the action signal. It's just like filming. Right. But uh, but it's not. Right. So here we are. This is a podcast. It's called Still Standing Up. I told you ahead of time. This is a lot about still standing up because mm -hmm. a lot of us have been knocked down, right? You've right. been knocked down a few times in your life. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, even if we both have been divorced. Yeah. That's a knockdown right there. It is. Man, and we still standing. <laughs> God, we didn't kill ourselves. <laughs> Barely. Wow. Sometimes you talk about killing yourself and not, not literally killing yourself, right. but sometimes I'll be in the shower and just go, man, really, God, really, what else is in store for me here? You, are we? Like, we are kindred spirits <laughs> That's what for happens. sure. That's what yeah. happens, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, some, I'll be alone with my, you know, in the shower is my usually mm -hmm. my contemplation place. Me too. When I'm not working on a body part, but, right? But, but uh, and I'll be, I'm like, wow, again with a test, right? It's just some. Sometimes it seems like we're tested, and maybe as performers, that's what leads us to perform. Yeah, I agree, and I, I think it's insane how we both like come up with our thoughts in the shower. I, I come up with so much material yeah. in the shower. It, I mean, I have to program my thoughts too, because sometimes you know when you're in there, it's just hot water coming down, and you're just mm. thinking, and so it's like. All right, let me get out of here because I'm going left. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, the, the thing is about the shower, though, it, it is this place of, uh, it's. I always consider it like a sauna. People take saunas. I make right. my shower really hot. Right. How about this Wim Hof? They do the cold thing. Have you ever done that, the cold plunge or the cold no, shower? No, I would never want to do that. Ever. My son, he's 14, says, I do cold showers. What are you talking about? He says, it wakes me up. I go, just wake up normally. Right, right. I need a cold shower. I don't, I don't understand that. But, and you can't contemplate when you're cold. You're going, oh, this sucks. Yeah. That's all you're thinking about. Right. When I'm warm, I'm in the womb again, and I'm really come up with amazing thoughts. Yeah. We should have a camera in our showers. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I didn't like that you went, looked at me when you said, I don't know. You looked at me up and down. I, no, because I'm like, you know, that's a little too personal. Maybe not. No, no. But that's the thing is, as comedians, we are very personal. We do yeah. reveal. That's what part of this show is about. We reveal things about ourselves, our experiences, that perhaps can help other people get by certain things in their life. Right. Like divorce. Right. Like other difficulties we've had. Now, you grew up in Philly like me. Mm -hmm. Philly and Jersey, actually. So I was born in Philly, but then I moved to Jersey. You moved it? What mall? Yeah. Oh. There's always a mall oh, nearby. Oh, Deffert. Jersey. Oh, you're at Deffert Mall. Yes. Okay. Yes. We used to go over there okay. to, to drink in Jersey. Oh, yeah. You know, nobody, I never said this before. You don't know this. Definitely you don't know this because okay. no one else does. I went over so many times. My friends called me the Jersey Giant. Where are we going, Jersey Giant? I go, Club Aljo or... A okay. blind pig or whatever it was. We go over to the, and drink in New Jersey. That was, okay. That was the big spot. And all the hot girls were there. Okay. There you go. I, I've never been to none of those <laughs> spots. So you wouldn't be talking. To, when you say hot girl, I wouldn't be one of those. <laughs> what, what, no, what are you talking about? No, I mean, you wouldn't go to any of those bars that I just named? I did not like Jersey too much. I was mad that my parents decided. I mean, thank I thank God because, you know, they were moving on up like the Jeffersons. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you don't think moving on up when you think Jersey because a lot of people make fun of Jersey. They do, but they it shouldn't. wasn't. It wasn't Camden, so no, it was we we weren't in be, Camden, yes. right? That would be no disrespect, Camden, but that would be moving down. Yes, uh, but we did move to a nice area, so you, it would be so moving you, up. You grew up a suburban life after starting in I the did. city. I'm yeah. like a city girl uh, and a suburban girl all in one. Yeah, and it could be a kind of a contrast, mm -hmm. an inner contrast even, because you like the comforts. Right. You're like, eh, if you get too comfortable, you're not that funny. You're not that creative. <sighs> Isn't it weird? And you get soft. Yes. You know, you get very soft and, um, you know, but then I feel like I look sometimes like at the inner city, like, why are y'all so hard? You know, <laughs> like life is good. Like cheer up. You wonder why you keep going through stuff because you're creating it. Yeah. So, so there yeah. is some sweet spot between mm -hmm. the two. Yes. Like you were saying, you like my mug here that I gave you. I do. I love your mug. Stuck between namaste and kiss my ass. Yes. And that's because you do yoga? I do. I do hot yoga. I go actually right down the street. I go to Core Power. You do the hot yoga. I love it. Where they shut the windows. Where they shut the windows, they turn the temperature up to 100 degrees and you're just sweating and, you know, you're in your thoughts, you're stretching. <laughs> My thoughts are only, oh, get me out of here. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. I can't breathe. I did it one time okay. uh, years ago when I was single and I said, uh, I'm going to go meet girls because right. all the hot no pun intended. Yeah. They go there, right? Right. And I went to an advanced class and I didn't realize I was brand new. <laughs> and uh, I didn't know it was hot yoga either. Right. I swear to God, I had the pad, you know, what do they call it? The mat. 
Mm-hmm. And I was dripping so much, it, it sounded like a gutter was emptying on the, it was like making sounds. Right. And the women were looking at me like in disgust. Yeah. Like, like why it, is there so much water under Oh my him? God, he smells, he's, st- right. I'm, 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 I'm groaning, I'm making noises. <laughs> and I finally went, somebody open the window. Right. <laughs> that was not received well okay. in the yoga class with all the spiritual people. Yeah. So needless to say, I didn't meet anybody in yoga class. Okay. It was not a good move. Sorry. Hot yoga. Why would yeah. you choose to torture yourself like that? It's not torture for me. It I isn't. love it. It's very, very, it's rejuvenating. I, I, So I take a pen and pad in there with me too. And Whoa. I'm actually, I know, I know. Wait a second. Yeah. So you're in downward dog r- it, writing your novel? Because something will come to me and I'll be like, ah! Because, you know, they don't want you to take phones in there. So you have to have your pen Tori, and your pad. This is another way you and I relate. We keep talking about this, how we're connected. I'm okay. the same way. I can't meditate for that reason. I have to have a pen right. next to me when I freaking meditate. But have it. That's fine. Meditate because I do too. So have your pen and paper with you because that's thoughts coming right from the creator. Constantly. Yes. Yeah. That's what people don't understand is when you do tap into your creativity or tap right. into your creator right. that comes up with this. Mm-hmm. It's not us and our minds coming up with it. Right. It's really tapping into the flow. Mm-hmm. How do you tap into your flow on a daily basis? What's your what's your mechanism that you use, your method? Okay, so I pray a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, I, you know, I was telling you a little bit earlier. So I come from a very spiritual background. My grandmother started a church. She was a minister. Um, my two aunts are ministers. I have three uncles. Uh, my cousins, they were the band in the church. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, you know, and so every Sunday, that's what we did. We would go to the church uh, on um, Mount on uh, area, as a matter of fact. And, you in know, Philly? in Philly. Yeah. Wow. Mount Moriah. I wonder if that's where I went. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> no, no, no. You're laughing. I've never okay. told this to anybody before. I was taken to a black church by Myrtle. Uh, I love. She was like a mother to me. Okay. And uh, Mm African-American. And actually, she spoke in a way that I will never forget. She didn't have to say words. Oh, she spoke in tongue? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh. um. (laughs) Mm -mm. Okay. Okay. So you tell me what I'm saying. You be the interpreter in what I'm saying. Mm Mm-mm. No. (laughs) No, you did not. It's more like, no, you did not. No, you did not. Right. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, you did. (laughs) (laughs) Mm -mm Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Now, listen here. Don't do that shit again. Oh, can we cuss? Wait. Yeah, I okay, I know we still standing. Uh, you, you can cuss. Maybe not in church. Okay. But let me tell you my experience in there. Okay. Myrtle would take me there on Sundays. It was mm-hmm. Baptist. Mm-hmm. And I have to tell you, I've been to, as a matter of fact, my guest coming up is, is a pastor. Right. And I've been to that church. And nothing compares to an all-black church mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. The celebratory nature. Yes. The the literal hallelujahs that I've never heard before like that. Guttural, from the heart, from the spirit, from the soul. That's why it's, you know, soul. Mm-hmm. And I get it. It is it is beyond anything I ever could experience at, a, at another place. It's, it's amazing. So I, what do you think it is? Why do you think that is the difference? I have my theories, but I want to hear okay. your theory on why I'm sitting there. I'm going, it's hallelujah. It's praise. Right. It's, it's uh, talking back, talking. Mm-hmm, like, you go, <laughs> you know, say, I, it like, say it. I think the ancestors, I, I think it's, you know, because you know, a lot of the, with our ancestors that were slaves, you know, we used hymns and scripture and spiritual songs to get through it. So I think it's like sometimes you're just connecting, you're channeling. I know for us, like it's, it was nothing like praise and worship. I mean, mm-hmm. and every week, you know, my one aunt, she would, she would preach and she'd be like, we got to win the war. <laughs> <laughs> like, and me and my sister, we'd be looking like, didn't we win the war last week? Like there's another <laughs> battle going on. Like I don't have many more battles, but my aunt Jean, she was always like, we got to win the war. So in our minds, it's like, we got to win this war, you know, and yeah. it's the war against Satan. But we're like, where is Satan at? We can't see him. So, you know, but I think that's what goes into it. It's that, um, you know, and you feel good when you're praising and you're worshiping. It just, it, you feel tingly. It's uninhibited, though. It's un- right. uninhibited. I think that, and I'm trying not to be racist against whites. Okay. <laughs> but well, you're white. I, I don't think you could be racist against percent. I'm 14 percent African. You are. <laughs> which part? Which part of Africa? <laughs> Ghana. <laughs> You're Guyanese. Don't give now. me that. Don't give me that look. <laughs> okay. I'm Guyanese. I'm not half Chinese. That's... No, Guyanese. Yeah. The Guyana. What is it? When you're from Ghana. Ghanaian. Oh no, Ghanaian. I'm Ghanaian. Ghanaian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ghanaian. 
according to 23 and me. That's 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 what. Okay, correct. But there is something that resonates with me. I'm telling you, Myrtle had a great effect on me. Mm-hmm. I mean, my mom watches the podcast. She's going to get upset with me. But Myrtle was like a mom. My mom was at work. Right, right. And Myrtle took care of us mm-hmm. and, and just was like introduced me to foods, introduced me to heart mm-hmm. that I've... I just never experienced with, you know, I don't, again, I don't want to be prejudiced with white people. Yeah. I don't experience this with white people. Right. right. I, and I'm just being honest. This is just what I got. You know, you and I connect instantly. Yeah. You're wondering why. Well, that's why I have something inside of my soul. Right. That has a connection. It doesn't matter 23 me. It's just, it's something I respond and resonate with when I'm at that church with her. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sitting there. Amen. Mm, hey, <laughs> You know, it just—it's a whole other hallelujah. It's a whole other—it's a celebratory thing. Right. I like celebrating life. Yeah, yeah. And I find that white churches—no offense, if Rob's probably in the other room, the pastor—but I have an unbelievable time. I cry in there as mm-hmm. well. You know, I've been at synagogues. I don't have the same synagogues. You're davening. You're doing things. It's all by rote. White, you know, in the other churches, all by get up, get down, get up, get down, and all that. Yeah. Here it's just like you're in there and everybody's a community. Well, black people, you another thing, we like to be entertained, okay? And we not I'm sure you notice, you know, when you do comedy, you do a white room versus a black room. Oh. It's like you got to bring it a little bit more than save when you go do a, a white comedy room because black people we're like, look, we paid our money. We want to be entertained, okay? It's just like when we go to church, it's like you want me, you want me to pay tithes, I need a show. Okay? <laughs> so, you know, we, I never we gotta, thought of that's the reason. Yeah, we got to give you a show. Dancing on stage. Right. And, and, <laughs> and, and even the choir. I was yeah. in the choir when I was a mm-hmm. kid. Oh, you got to just be still. Yeah. You go to a black, it's there is yeah. a, a whole rhythm <laughs> thing going on. <laughs> Don't wait till the battle's over and shout the now. Show, hallelujah. <laughs> and, and, and the preachers, and yeah. the whole cadence is different. Hum. You know, the preacher, guy, and I call for God right now, hum. Like, they're going to give you a on, whole, give right. I mean, you the TDJs, get ready, get ready, get ready. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, my God, this is so fun. This is what I paid for. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'll put more in that collection plate. <laughs> right. Because it's a show. You're going to pay for a better show. you got to put I on a show. never thought of it that way. Yeah. Well, we're going to leave it right there, and uh, it's called the tease. It's how when you write, you have to tease. Oh, a tease, I'm yes. Gonna, I'll get a tease. No, not like nan, 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 nan. Right, right. <laughs> but, but we're going we're gonna to tease the next segment that's coming up, and we're going to find out some more answers right after we take a pause. <laughs> 